Welcome back to the Power Five, everybody. I am, of course, the appropriately named Brian Power. Went 3-1 and one in MLB on yesterday's show. Should have been 4-0, but won't complain too much. Also gave you an NFL future. You can go back in the archives and listen to that. But let's get right into five free MLB winners for Tuesday. As a reminder, you can always smash that like button if you're in agreement with me on these. Reds, number one, minus 135 versus the Cardinals. It's our first play. The Reds won last night as underdogs. Very efficient with six runs on six hits. Most of the production came from the bat of Spencer Steer, who homered twice and drove in five runs tonight. Since he has its best starting pitcher on the mound, that's going to be Hunter Green. He has a .92 ERA his last six starts. Four of those six starts, he did not allow a single run. Now, Green's last loss did come against these Cardinals. That was back, all the way back, on June 30th. But you should know what I'm going to say. Bring up next, uh, St. Louis, 60-59 and 59 this season, but they've got a minus 53 year-to-date run differential. Cincinnati's 58-61, and 61, but they have a plus 45 run differential. Despite what those one-loss records may say, the Reds are the better team here. They have their best starter going again. I know this is precisely the kind of game the Reds usually lose to frustrate us all. Call me stubborn. This could be the series that finally vaults Cincy into their rightful place, which is second in the NL Central. Number two, Astros minus 135 versus the Rays. If you watched yesterday, you know I said to back the Strohs in the first five. That was an easy win. Framber Valdez, outstanding yet again. Looking at Houston and Tampa Bay, uh, big picture. These are pretty clearly two teams trending in very different directions right now. Houston's won six in a row. It's the longest active win streak in all of baseball right now. Tampa Bay, well, they've lost five of seven. I have to bring up their run differential as well for the year. It's minus 54. So very fortunate that they're at 500 on the season. But the front office knew that this team was going nowhere. They were a seller at the trade deadline. The Rays, thus a team to fade, in my opinion, the rest of the way. Meanwhile, Houston, even with this six-game win streak, they're still only a half game ahead of Seattle in the AL West. So they can't really afford to let up. You say Kikuchi, their big acquisition at the trade deadline, he's back on the mound Tuesday. He's been great in two starts since coming over, including 11 Ks against these very same Rays back on August 2nd. This Rays lineup is putrid. Five regulars now hitting below 200, so I like Houston to win again today. Full game this time. Number three, Guardians minus 130 versus the Cubs on the money line. So I back the Cubs Monday is a 3% release. The reason being, they had a tremendous scheduling edge over the Guardians. Cubs had played just twice in the previous four days, while Cleveland was playing for a seventh time in six days. The Cubs also had Shota Imanaga starting on Monday. Turns out none of that mattered. They lost a tough one, 9-8. to eight. No real scheduling edge Tuesday, and obviously no Imanaga, so I'm going to look to fade Cub pride here. Say what you will about the Guardians. Maybe they're not as good as their record, but they have the best home record in all of baseball, and they've won three straight overall. Matthew Boyd, who the team hopes can really help out this starting rotation, he'll be making his first big league start of the season here. He looked outstanding in five rehab stints down in the minors, posted a .83 ERA with 27 strikeouts in 21 and two-thirds innings. I know the Guardians' bullpen bit taxed right now. Class A's pitched three days in a row, but they should have the edge early. Don't be fooled by the fact the Cubs have won Javier Assad's last four starts. Assad has made it past the fourth inning only once in that stretch. So the Guardians are the play there. Number four, Rangers Red Sox under 10. Only loss yesterday on the Power 5 was the Red Sox under their team total of 4.5. They ended up scoring five runs thanks to the game going 11 innings. Cruel break, considering the Red Sox had just three runs after nine innings. Now, Boston backers are going to point to the fact the team certainly had its fair share of scoring opportunities, only to go two for ten with runners in scoring position. However, still not going to trust a lineup that has failed to score more than four runs in nine innings in any of its last five games. I know both starters, Jose Urena and Cutter Crawford, have been struggling of late, to say the least. But that's been baked into this number. And if these teams couldn't combine for 10 runs in 11 innings last night, don't think they'll get to 10 tonight. 
under is my call in that one. Number five, last but not least, bit of an ugly one here, but I'm grabbing the plus one and a half on the run line with the Pirates against the Padres. Look, you'd be hard-pressed to find a more vocal supporter of the Padres than yours truly. Came into the 2024 season higher than the market on them several weeks ago. Said they were live to win the NL pennant. No team's been better than the All-Star break. Last 20 games, San Diego's 17-3. and Before their last five wins, guys, have come by exactly one run. The one that didn't was a game that went to extra innings. Padres 4-0 since the All-Star break in extra innings. And including last night, they have four other one-run victories. I know the Pirates are in a terrible way right now. But Luis Ortiz, I've said it before, he's a good starter. And he's going tonight. Just think one of these days, the Padres are due to have a slip-up, similar to Sunday uh, in Miami. Michael King, who starts for San Diego tonight, he's already surpassed his career high in innings. Again, the Padres have just two non-extra inning wins this month by two or more runs. So I like the Pirates on the run line. Let's recap the Power 5 for you here real quick. Reds' money line versus the Cardinals. It's around minus 135. Astros money line over the Rays. Get around minus 135. Guardians money line against the Cubs. Around minus 130. Rangers Red Sox under 10. And then Pirates plus one and a half on the run line. You can let me know what you think of those sec- selections, not sections, uh, by commenting down below. Also, Got to bring this up again. New special offer going on at Wager Talk. You can get seven days of service for the price of three. Just $69 for seven days worth of plays. With me, that includes the start of the Premier League season. Uh, so you're going to want to get involved. Why is the start of the Premier League season and soccer such a big deal? Well, how about a 33-14-2 and run in soccer that I'm on. That goes all the way through the finals of both the Euro Cup and the Copa America. I ended the Premier League season last year on an 8-0 run. I finished number one for the season in the Premier League. Number one at Wager Talk for the season in La Liga. Number one at Wager Talk for the season in Serie A. So three different domestic leagues. I was number one last season, including that 8-0 finish in the EPL 33-14-2 33-14-2 run with all soccer. Very excited to get things going this weekend back on the pitch. One more time. Seven days for the price of three. Just $69 for a seven-day all-access. Many of you took advantage yesterday. I uh, recommend the rest of you do as well today. And if you're not already subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel, what exactly are you waiting for? Morning Wager is another program I'm on Monday through Friday with my good buddy, Mark Zinno. When you click that bell, you get instant alerts when this show drops. Uh, Also on first pitch today with Zinno. So plenty of me, plenty of baseball talk here on Tuesday on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.